Hello guys, this is going to be a video just to once again talk about how backlines work specifically and what are after uh, the Glade update, the Angela nerf, what is what we would consider the most meta backlines. To start with, I'm just going to explain the principles and I'm going to go to the book to show different players that work in different comps. If you're more interested in that, just skip to that part. So let's get started. Uh, if we're looking at my comp, it's going to be pretty simple. The idea is basically we have a goalkeeper who buffs the line, but that's more mine. Most of them don't. Of course, the goalkeeper heals because that's the meta for any of the new gen goalkeepers with the existence of utility matches be lasting a bit longer. You always want to have a goalkeeper who heals or in Jin's case, you can reroll him for star tier in case case star tier. Any any good goalkeeper can be rerolled to that. And usually if they don't have healing, that's because they have great skills in the other sections. Now, the second thing you're going to want is usually this is going to be all the way on the left. It's going to be the player that they shoot at. So that's a person that you got to tell yourself they're not going to be too suicidal. And at the same time, they're going to be able to take a beating to stop the enemy from ending up in a 1v1. Uh, a lot of these players can even be players who have buffs when being shot at. And assist players or even players who have... Uh, uh, self-regeneration, revival traits. Uh, when I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking uh, Alios, I'm thinking Silk, I'm thinking the Elua and the Light Family. There's a few of them who exist who can do that. And at a specific time, they're going to be able to revive. So, of course, those guys have an advantage. Plus, it brings them back life, whatever happens. So, right there, that's a great advantage. Uh, also, you can put a passer because a passer won't try and penetrate ever. So it's much harder on top of it to steal from them because they have high reflex. It's usually a good deal. Then you're usually going to have in the middle uh, some form of buffer. And you usually don't want it to be a player who's going to penetrate because in 95% of mids there's going to be a Metatron, there's going to be a Felix. There's just going to be something very strong that if you hit, you're either reviving the entire enemy team or you're going to be destroyed and by dying they just bring the ball back front who's what usually happens when people try to penetrate me. So that's exactly why Milky Way is the easiest one to kill. Now, this is the logic why the middle one is supposed to be a great buffer. Good ideas, again, I'm using my comp as an example, is an elemental res totem. Uh, in light example, this would be Cheetos. Uh, the reason this is important is because certain elements will have advantages above others. In my case, if I face a thunder and I don't have Cheetos, we could pretty much say GG. Uh, some are stronger, and if you're in a rainbow, always throw in Magnus. He doesn't have elemental conditions, so he's just great irrelevant. Uh, then, if you want, you can throw a second buffer in backline. Uh, this player can be basically another from a buff, or even a second attacker or stealer. Uh, this is in that area you can go. In my case, I decided to throw Huyan Ran, just because 50% increased max life and decrease 7% for enemy, enemy dead. You think it's not that much, but in endgame fights, when uh, my entire midline is dead, half my frontline is dead, this is just insane. And the only way for it to stop working is if Virgil penetrates two lines, meaning his use is active, so everyone's back up. So this is kind of how you can take advantage of that skill. And then, of course, a healer. Uh, you can decide to just have one totem, one healer, one totem, one healer, one penetrator. It's all up to you, but it's always tr advised to try to have a healer because Metatron alone will usually not be able to pull it off. The only exception to this would be in certain Presti lines and Thunder, their healer can actually go in midline. So it's not that big of a deal. But in most comps, that's kind of how you're going to try to run it. So now let's go and talk about the meta. So as a lot of you know, Angela has been nerfed. We've got two legendary goalkeepers. And uh, Alios technically got a nerf, but it depends how you look at it. So first, if we look <coughs> on the Wormwind side of the force, uh, when we're looking at this, we're always going to be looking at the good old Jin Man. So sadly, he is one of the goalkeepers who is either going to need to be re-rolled or he's going to need an Alios on the line. If you have one, you can actually keep him running a POME who's going to give him Basically, insane stats, still stacked with the survival. The only issue with this is when you run him in PvE, it's just not going to be powerful enough, and it's not going to be as good. 
Again, this is something that's going to have a double-edged blade. You want to have a separate build or do you want to have the same build? Then again, if you have multiple legends, you can still pull it off in PvE, but I'm just saying the stats. In that kind of line, you can try it for an Alios, you can try it for different things. Uh, Curl has been changed, and there is currently a bug that if he is facing the striker and the striker shoots, he gives him DR. Uh, he, he doesn't make DR, but he lowers his attack. Uh, this was an error done on Song of Night of Knife 2. So for the moment, you can still exploit that. Then you have Silk, you have Magnus, you can also throw a Samir. It depends what exactly you're trying to go for, but all of these players are going to make a great back. Uh, also, Kiki, just try to complete always the affection chain of your goalkeeper, Totem, a bit of healing, anything's good, even Miho. Try to work around that. If you have Elios, you actually don't need Miho because when the fight's somewhere else, She'll still be healing the back. So in, in uh, Wormwind, I'm going to say, if you can get Jin, I'll use Durant back, you're just set. It's going to be one tanky hell of a backline. Especially if you put Alios facing the striker, removing all of his buffs. So in Wormwind, then in Jin, that's usually the meta. Uh, if you're going Rainbow, it's still going to be pretty much the same thing for him. The only thing is, as you saw, Shaman's kit is extremely powerful. And if you don't have Alios, instead I would go to the Ardor and throw in Galf because he is technically the best healer currently. Now, if we're going back to Angela, uh, her best line is actually not just Ardor. The Mono Ardor backline is still pretty strong. But without Durant, she is extremely weak. She just really used that penetration resistance, especially now with the Ardor races, the Thunder aces, it's just not as strong. Um, she, I'm not saying that she's turned to trash. I'm just saying that it is very hard. And the only reason you try to leave her in Mono Ardor is if you're able to get a Shu, because he's just able to heal her. Shu and Galf combo is extremely powerful in backline. And this would be one of the few reasons why you would say just going Mono Ardor in the backline is fine. Especially if you can put a good uh, Ardor ace, then it would also be okay. Uh, then we have uh, the Dark Player Presti. Now, again, for her, it's actually going to be a little bit more complicated uh, because, again, she doesn't have her E yet, and maybe by that time, the, a few things might have changed. Uh, since she's able to paralyze the enemy striker, uh, you have to find a way to not let the enemy passers get the ball back because a lot of people are doing dual passers to counter that. And at the same time, you got to make a resistance because you do need to note, as you can see in this picture, Vitality is one of her lowest stats. And Vitality means life for a goalkeeper. It is kind of something ridiculously important. Uh, her skills are really great and they do maximize a lot of stuff. They have forms of self-healing. So this is what's something you need to work on. She doesn't actually need a healer because healing 30% uh, is actually a lot. It's not bad if you have heals, of course but she doesn't require that. Uh, she does have insane synergy with Alios and Shaman. Both of them are going to work great with her just because when combining them, uh, you're going to be able to counter what she lacks. Is that She gets DR for people alive, but if you combine that with Shaman, if they're alive or dead, she still ends up with a form of damage resistance, meaning whatever they do, she's still going to be 50-60% just on a skill-wise, and we're not even talking about these beautiful stones for the exact meta of a goalkeeper. So all around, she's very well built. Alios, Shaman are some great additions. Then she can also work in Monodark. It is not as toxic, but it can still be extremely powerful because they have a lot of speed debuffs. You can try to put uh, an Alice in backline. I've seen a lot of cool stuff be done, and she can also work pretty damn well. And if you're looking on a Monodark level, she's clearly above every other Goalkeeper there, and is somehow a counter to Vonchi, who I do not really find normal that a dark player is a counter to a light player. But eh, why not? And now the worst or best, depends how you see this, of course, is Glade. So she's the brand new uh, Thunder goalkeeper. Uh, as you can see her right here, she has a lot of potential. Uh, she actually heals whenever there's a pass done online. Um, and she buffs line buffs. So, actually, I've seen some very interesting builds where I wasn't waiting to see on a Glade line. Uh, the idea was actually to put as many long passers as you could. Uh, that meant uh, throwing, uh, I can't remember the name of every single one of them, 
But uh, the Thunder Legend and... Uh, no, that is the wrong player. Well, basically all the Thunder long passers in backline and maybe Nerua. And like this, they would keep passing, healing back the goalkeeper, who is actually pretty strong. And since the goalkeeper and you have one... You have two or three more long passers. You're basically going to be able to bring the ball back front, especially knowing how Thunder is extremely fast. And if they're not penetrating, you can't counter reflex, then you can barely do anything to them. Who was a very original build. Now, if you're not planning to do that build, who's surprisingly powerful, you can also just try to go like Rainbow. Of course, she would buff Durant's buffs, who's insanely powerful. You could throw in a Shaman. Again, that 50% life, that DR, and that's not even the max level of the DR. She's just not even EE, so there's a lot of potential right there. You can have Nerua anywhere on the team. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to buff her. Uh, in Mono Thunder, I gotta admit, unless they have the multi-passer back, I've been still able to kill them, and I'm pretty much Mono Light, so that's not a good sign. Now, the multi-passer was surprisingly good, and they were able to pull off five shots against me. Sadly, their Leventor had the weirdest build I've ever seen. It had an, an encompassing soul. I'm not getting who the hell was setting that up, but they did not understand how Leventor works. So these are pretty much the four top goalkeeper. Now, I'm not saying that these are the only goalkeepers and that these are the best lines you're ever going to meet. I'm saying when maxed out, they're going to be pretty tough. Now, you're not forced to be running this to get all the way to Galaxy. Uh, a few honorable mentions will, of course, be thrown uh, to our, our Monolite uh, waifu, uh, Isilla. Uh, BT in the critical resistant line. All of those are still able to pull off a pretty nice weight. So basically there's six, six goalkeepers that are really viable currently. And depending on how you build them, they can work better or worse. Again, for every goalkeeper, you need to have an objective in mind. And you can stack a bit of critical resistance, a bit of life, a bit of DR. You got to really think, what are you looking for? My idea was to build a backline with around 3k life on every single player that at least half of them are able to reflex, penetrate, heal themselves, and that everyone is self-sufficient. Uh, in my case, it works pretty well, and on top of it, when we steal from a striker, most of the time he either just stays dead because Leia's going to be able to penetrate before, and we're even going to burn his action bar off. There's a bunch of stuff I can pull off, and this is the idea of the line. So you got to work on finding some cool synergy. Again, every line is different, and we're always going to remember that in the midline and the front line, you can work on chains who's pretty nice, and having someone as Metatron, Felix, Galf, um, even Freya in midline can always help the back, or of course the super toxic Latios Gibral thing in the front line, but I mean, even I don't want to run that. So this is the pretty much what you should know about the current state of goalkeepers in the meta. If you have any opinions, questions, or you want a question about a specific element, uh, I can try to give you some advice on that too. Have a good day, guys.